try not to talk much just because of the voice. But uh, <laughs> please don't do it. Please don't. Yeah. Uh, no, it's <laughs> yes and no. Like Friday, I, I went out and I, I was at the club without a sweater. Wow, you were at the club. <laughs> we were at the club, perro. I wasn't there. <laughs> we were never there. All right, they're all rolling. That one's good. That one's good. Make sure everything's recording. I'll do yeah. the whole podcast and there's no Bro, recording. Have you guys had, ever oh, had that happen or no? In San Diego. Oh, that sucks, man. You both too. It was both of us. It was yeah. both of us. It was both like, of us. Relax. It's, it's, it's it's I'll, take, I'll take blame, too. <laughs> all right, but a Tosa Live podcast, man. The most authentic, most organic podcast out here, baby. Thank you guys for having me, man. I appreciate man. it. You already know your host, Dusko. All the way to far left, that's Dylan, the guy, everybody's so, favorite. Y'all already know, y'all already know. But we're here for the man of the hour, everybody's favorite trucker, everybody's favorite YouTube TikTok sensation, Mr. Alex Nino in the house, Thank baby. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming all this way. Yeah, dude, it was, it was a mission to, to get over here. Like I said, when I was telling you guys off camera, the whole grapevine situation and all that, I thought it was going to be closed. Yeah, I was like, man, I might have to reschedule on these guys if the if, if it's still closed because it, on Wednesday it was still closed. See, this is where, guys, I'm telling you right now, you got to take the shots that you never know you can make. And, exactly, uh, Alex. I know you were part of another podcast this weekend, and I seen it, and I was like, right away, we we got to we yeah, gotta take you this you shot. Me, you, literally, you messaged me right away like, hey, double header, and I was like, I'm down. <laughs> But then it, it didn't work out, so we had to switch it over to the next day, but we're still here. But it's good, because today's the Lord's Day, and we're all here on... With holy water. With, with holy water. Yeah, with holy water. <laughs> Happy that you already know. Talk to us, man. But for the people that are listeners that don't know you, and for the people that are listening in right now, where are you from? How old are you? For Just to give us that little background before we get into it. So I'm from the Central Valley, a little town um, called Dinuba, California, and usually whenever we... We people who are from there, whenever they say they're from Dinuba, they have to say, "Oh, it's by Fresno," and that's when people are like, "Oh, yeah, you're you're oh. in that area." I'm 25 years old, and yeah, 25, <laughs> 25, bro. What the? F do I, see, I look younger, no, bro. I, this how, is how old do you think I am? How old do you think I am? I would say 30. Nah, I would say 26. Why does everyone think I'm older, it's bro? Because the way you carry yourself, big guy. You're younger. I'm 23. Oh, up. shit, I'm older than you? He's the he's the baby of the show and Jose the baby of the show. Uh, you? I'm 27. Oh, okay, so you're, you, we're all the... I'm, I'm, the, I'm the dad of the, of the group. <laughs> I'm the one, hey, mijo, parale, por favor. You're the yeah. oldest out here. I'm, I'm the oldest, but some, somebody has to have a balance sometimes. Yeah. Right? Sometimes? Yeah. But um, let, let's get right into this, dude, because growing up in a long Fresno, right, for the people <laughs> that don't know, what was your upbringing? Are you an only child? Are you a child of? I have one other sibling, just one sister. So it's just me and her, and um, that yeah, it's just I have one other sibling. You've always lived in in that city. Yeah, so born uh, and raised. Yeah, born and raised there, bro. Damn! Now born that you're a big YouTuber, everyone. you're not like you gotta move. No, nah, dude. I so like the whole thing with that is like so my YouTube and my social media kind of revolves around trucking content and stuff Correct. like that. So I've. I kind of have to stay in that in that space, but I I, I genuinely enjoy truck driving. So I, I I can't even even if I got bigger than than this, I feel like I would still do it, or maybe even invest the money I'm making into buying a truck. So that way I can continue. Because in my head, I always think like social media isn't forever, so why not take advantage and invest my money into something that I love doing already? It's I think uh, recently, if I'm not mistaken, a year ago you. Blew up even more, right? Yeah, so it, it literally, man, it all started exactly a year ago. So around this time, March, well, YouTube, uh, but TikTok and all, all that, it was probably like around 2021. Mm -hmm. I started TikTok in 2019. And, um, but it, everything kind of like just blew up where like people were reaching out to me and like influencers started following me last year in March. What, what was the, the biggest influencer that you got that you were like, oh, shit, they're watching? Um, I think right now it would have to be, it would have to be Flex. Flex, oh. yeah, he just he just followed me, and I was, dude, I was, I, I was like, oh, my God, this guy actually followed me. And <laughs> I was like, I was, that's probably, like, one of the biggest influencers right now that I can think of from the top of my head mm -hmm. that is following me from with all this. So to kind of take it a little bit more back, because this show is based off of your story. Yeah. How you got started, how you came up. So 
Is trucking a part of, has it always been a part of your life or how'd you end up in this career path? Uh, so it hasn't always been a part of my life. And I, in the beginning, I, I never even thought I would even, I never considered trucking. I, I would always, I remember going to my uncle's because my uncle's my boss and he's the one who got me into all this stuff. Trucking's always been in my family because of him. He's done it for over 15 years, but I remember being younger and going to his house for like family parties and getting to his truck and being like, how the, how do you drive this thing? Like I would never drive this thing. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it's kind of, it kind of just always has been in my life, but I never thought that it would, it would get me to where I'm at today. Man, so when you were growing up, like your parents, you have both parents? Yes, both parents. Still your, your dad wasn't a truck driver? No, my dad's not, no, my dad wasn't a truck driver, which is, it's funny because yeah. my, my <laughs> uncle, you would think that they would both be trucking, but no, my, it was my uncle. He kind of just started randomly too. And after that, he bought his own trucks and then he just made his way up. So this person, this Alex that is like confident, this person that is hardworking, were you always this person growing up, like in elementary, high, specifically high school? Um, I feel honestly, no, man. I, uh, to be honest, I kind of was a little bit more on the like, I would kind of just game a lot. I would play video games a lot. And then I, I, I kind of was just like a, like a home buddy. Like I wouldn't really do much. Mm. And then once I, once I got my wife pregnant and I was like, oh, shit, like, I need to do something. I, I need to do something to support them because I was working at McDonald's. So I, I went the whole high school, my whole like high school, I was working in, in McDonald's. And once I got her pregnant, I was like, OK, like I need to I need to do something. And I know that I have like a big role now that I'm going to be a dad, a young dad, 18, just graduated high school. Literally two months after after I graduated high school, oh we it was a celebration. It was a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> it was he, a celebration said, for, he said graduation, graduation party, graduation yeah. party. Say less. Yeah, man. But as soon as I I realized that I was gonna have this little guy right here, my firstborn, I was like, I need a I need to do something now. What, bro? That man, we. I, it's so, crazy to say that it's it's yes. it's crazy, man. Did yeah. Did you ever like think to going like the Twitch route, like? Cause uh, you said you did gaming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I never. I well, actually, dude, I would actually before I would always be like, how do people record their gameplay? And because uh, it would be so crisp and stuff. And I remember I would have my mom had this little camera, this little burgundy camera that she bought at Walmart, and I would grab it and I would just put set it up and record myself playing from the <laughs> camera, and it would always look so ugly. I even have uh, videos on YouTube that I would record. Uh, little clips and stuff of me, like, on Modern Warfare 2, I would get, like, tactical nukes and stuff like that. <laughs> and I would post it, and then I, yeah, that's how. Have you seen the, how they do it on live? Like, they, they put the camera to, to the, to the uh, person to the on the game, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And then they have a mirror facing the, the player. Mm. Now you see is, is the mirror with the face of the player, but you see the TV. It's crazy, bro. These people are geniuses, dude. Yeah, dude. Oh, and I, I always wonder, like, how do, they, how do they do that? And I remember, like, well, maybe I just got to get a good camera. But little did I know, it was, like, a whole, like, little system they had going on it's, where it's, it's so like crazy how huh? and stuff. You, yeah. start, you start researching more, and, like, you see these big uh, influencers. Like, even the cam, like, we can buy a $3,000 camera, but that influencer has a $1,000 camera, but doing a lot of content. And... And what's crazy that you say that, dude, is, like, how you're saying, like, the $3,000 camera and the $1,000 camera is, like, there's a lot of people who, who don't want to start social media because they're, like, oh, I don't have the equipment. I don't have this. But, dude, I literally started with my iPhone strapped to my forehead. Strapped to my forehead. That's what I was talking about earlier. I was literally like, strapped. that shit on his forehead or what? Yeah, because yeah. he was, like, this will walks in with just his camera on his chest or what? I'm no, like, yeah, I, I, I remember I was in my truck one day, and I, I never wanted to buy a GoPro. And I was, like, I seen a rubber band uh, from the truck. There was these rubber bands that hold stuff together, so I took it off. And it was, like, the right size, so I, I grabbed it, and I flipped my phone like this, upside down. And you can do 0 0.5 so it would get wide. And I would put it on my forehead and get the rubber band, and I would just do my POVs like that. Literally, that's why I, I'm like, there's no excuse on why you shouldn't start. You, you know, for a fact, you used that somewhere else before. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, bro. Yeah, it's, that's that's how I started. That's why there's no excuse. It, it, just a phone and a rubber band. But to to bring light and shed light to because you became a dad at 18. Yeah. You basically, as society and everybody says. You didn't have, you didn't live your 20s. You didn't no. live your after high school life no. because you had to 
man up. A big responsibility. And you had a you had a choice, right? Because yeah. there there is people that are still our young dads at eighteen and decide to be there every now and then. Yeah. But then there's people like you, guys like you, men like you, dads like you that said, no, I need to do this now. Yeah, and I could have, dude, I, I was so young and stupid that I could have been like, you know what, I don't want to have a kid, like, get out of here. Like, I, like, I could have did some dumb things like that, but I, like, my parents didn't raise me that way. My, my dad and my mom have always been in my life, so I, I kind of take after my dad. I would see how my dad is, and I, I always knew that I had to be there for my, my wife and my son. What was that game changer? Like, the first, first moment or one thing that realized, like, God damn, I'm a dad. Um, I think when I was, I was, uh, I was telling my, my boy Carlos yesterday, I was like, I think I would, it was when I was flipping patties in the, in the kitchen and I was like, damn, my, because me and her, we, we kept it. She was seven months or what, six, seven months when we told our parents that she was pregnant. We yeah. didn't, we, yeah. You were in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> we like, hey, um, it's, pop, it's coming. Yeah, practically. And I remember being in the kitchen, man, and I was, like, flipping the patties and stuff, and I was like, man, this isn't going to, this isn't going to do me any good to stay here. I mean, like, I'm not trying to throw any shade at people who work in the fast food industry because it's a super hard job, you know, and it, it, there go, there's, it's a lot that goes on behind there. But it's for, like, everybody, there's moments. There's people that are willing to, and wanting to stay there for as long as they can. Yeah. But then there's people like like you, like us. Want that more. Want more that know like, hey, this isn't the, this isn't the end. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. This is only the beginning of something greater. Yeah, so I'm, I, that's when I realized like, okay, I, like I'm going to be a dad and I need to be more responsible at the time. Because I, I even had a, a two-seater. I had a 370Z. Back then, I had it bagged and everything. I would spend all, dude. I actually had it bagged and <laughs> yeah, everything. I, I had. I remember spending my uh, when I, I went to college for a year, and I got the uh, financial aid, and I went and put a down payment on wheels. And my mom was so mad at me that I did that, and I was like, "Hey, this is what I love to do." And she was like, "Why would you spend your money on that? Like, you could use it for school or whatever." But I was like, "No, like this is what I love to do." But then, yeah, it was it was crazy. It, so when 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 do you when do you make that change? When do you leave McDonald's? To so the it's crazy. The day he was born, that same morning, I got a call from another warehouse. I had a, a friend at the time who worked at a warehouse, and I knew he was making okay money to like at least be able to support my wife and son. And I reached out to him, and I was like, "Hey, man, like my wife's pr my girlfriend. At, she's my wife now, but a girlfriend at the time. Um, I was like, she's pregnant, like." hooked me up with a job and he put in a good word for me and I got an interview and that day that he was born I got a call in the morning literally he was born and a couple hours later they gave me a call and they're like hey you got the job so it, yeah that was it was it was a crazy crazy day two so, blessings in one day yeah literally for real so how long did you stay at that warehouse job then I stayed at that warehouse job so I started in 2016 and I Left in 2019. No. Yeah, 2019. No. April of 2019. Fuck and God. it wasn't by choice. <laughs> I, no? got fi I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you get fired? <laughs> okay, so I did this thing. I was, it was <laughs> the warehouse. They would ship out medical and dental stuff. And I was in the, in the trailers which is kind of funny because now I'm a truck driver. So I was kind of always around it, you know? Yeah, like you never knew this is what you're going to be yeah, doing, yeah. but you were there. So I remember um, the conveyor belt would bring down boxes, and there were certain boxes that had stickers that needed ice in them, and I had to put the ice in them. And this certain product was going to a, a dentist, and uh, the medicine, I didn't put the, the ice in there. So by the time the package got to the dentist, it was, it was, it was, Bad. no, it was no good. Yeah. And it was over $4,000 and I did it twice. So Ooh. after the second time, they're like, Hey dude, like you got to go. But honestly, it was probably what, like a, the biggest uh, blessing in disguise. All right. So you got fired. What happens after this? Um, I didn't know what I was going to do, man. I, at that time I was, me and my, me and my wife were working at the time. She was working at McDonald's and I had that job. And after I got fired, I was kind of just like, fuck, like, what am I going to do? I had no money at all. Like, I couldn't save anything to save my life. And I remember the day I got fired, 
um, before they fired me, they at least told me like, hey, if you want, you can take the money out of your 401k that you've had since 2016. Mm. Just like, cause they, like they, I'm sure they probably knew, like I wasn't in a position to get fired, obviously, you know? Yeah. And I was able to take that money out of the 401k and live and pay the, my rent for a couple months. And then I had to sell my car. I had a G35 at the time. And, um, Sheesh. yeah, I had, a, I, had a, I, had a, I had a G35, and I had to sell it, man. I, I got to go get a warehouse job now, folks. <laughs> hey, we got to go to McDonald's and then a warehouse job, yeah. okay? okay. So, Understand this. I, mean, I went to a McDonald's in the morning, so not the warehouse job. Get FAFSA, too, please. <laughs> yeah, FAFSA, that shit works. Got to get the wheels. That ain't going to happen. It comes, with, it comes with rims, okay? It comes with rims. <laughs> so I remember I had to sell that to pay my rent because I didn't know. I, at this point, I still didn't know that I wanted to do truck driving. I, I at this point I still it w- I didn't know what I was gonna do. Were you getting like advice from anybody at that time? Because um, you know, like when you're a young dad, you're still learning. There's everybody and anybody like I think you should do this. I think you should like this is the way you need a parent. This is the way you need for your family. Yeah. Um. So like I said, my uncle's always been in the in the trucking industry. Don't worry, happy dads do this, bro. Yeah, happy so, dads do this. So I was like, I, I knew it was always there. I just never really wanted to because of how intimidating it really is to get into a semi truck. And I remember my dad telling me, like, well, like, you got fired. Like, you need to do something. Ask your uncle to, to help you. But I didn't want to, man. I was like, no, 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 no. And I talked to her about it. And she goes, maybe that would be the smart move. Like, you can make more money. And I remember my uncle telling me, too, like, dude, like, you can make really good money doing this. Like, quit your job. I'll get you, I'll help you go to school and all that, and then I'll give you a job. But I never wanted to. I never, I never really wanted to because I was, like, so intimidated with the truck. But is it, is it also you didn't want that, the lending hand? No, not so much that, honestly. I think I was just scared to get behind the wheel. Yeah, that's just scary. I was watching one of your videos, and you're backing that shit up. The door's open, and you're looking at it. I'm like, Yeah, it's what? so easy. It's so easy now, man. It's crazy. It's like driving a, it's like driving a car. You can't even back up the fucking truck right now <laughs> without hitting the... I'm like, no, my man. <laughs> yeah, but it was... That's when I... Yeah. So what... After talking to your wife, did you have to bring down your fear and your pride to, like, hey, deal... Yeah, for I'm sure, right. for sure. Because I knew that after um, I sold that car for $7,000. So I was like, okay, I have like a couple months to be paying the rent with this money. I need to figure something out. So I had a certain amount of time to to do it. I had, yeah. It was like a, like a little a timeline. And that's when I realized like, okay, I'm going to reach out to my uncle. I didn't have the funds. I had the money for my 401k, but I couldn't spend it to go to school because then I would have been screwed at the time um and then that's when i reached out to him and i told him like hey like i want to start trucking and he's always talked to me about it so i was like can you help me go to school and my uncle is like yeah like he didn't even hesitate he's like here's the money i he asked me how much is it i asked i told him how much it was and he gave me the money and he he's like go to school and then soon literally the day i got my license that same day i started working Sheesh. fuck yeah but before that, like, during that whole time with me going to school, I was washing his trucks just to make, oh, man. To make extra money, man. Yeah, so he had a little uh, hose and everything, and I would just get one of those long sticks that extend for the semi-trucks to clean them. Yeah. And I would put soap in a little thing, and I would get there at 7 in the morning and be there till like, 5 in the afternoon washing all six of his trucks. And then he would give me, like, 200, 300 bucks at the end of the day for washing his truck. Yeah, and I, I remember like that one of the first times when he gave me uh, three hundred bucks. I was like, you know what? I was like, let's go, let's go eat. I remember that that day. I was like, let's go. We want to go get some tacos and stuff. And yeah, it was crazy, man. Man, so this is like a whole this turn this of is, event. This is a grind. This, this is, is a fucking grind. This is a fucking yeah, grind. It's, it, yeah, dude. It's it's been a grind for a while, and I I feel like trucking has completely changed my life. Like, I mean, dude, I'm sitting here with you guys. Like, it it's got me. Like connections. Hold on, hold on, no, no, no. That, that hold on, right here, better, 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 better. Better. you're sitting here with. We're sitting here with you. We're sitting here with you. Yes, yeah, and I don't see it like that, man, nah. at all. And my wife always tells me that I need to not be so hard on myself because I always like. She's like, dude. People love watching you. Like people will live through. Like people that can't do trucking will live through you. So you need to, like. You need to realize that people love watching you. But I, yes. I just can't see it like that. And me yep. personally, I'm just like. Like, I feel like I'm a boring person. I'm just like why, like, why do people love watching me? And that's when she's like, no, don't, like, don't think like that. Like, people love watching you. So, 
if people have been hearing us now for as as long as we've been, they just hear you worked at McDonald's, you became a dad at eighteen, you got a warehouse job, you got fired, you became a trucker. So so now with everything that you're doing at this point of your life, it's been a grind. It it really has, man. It, it really has. Did at one point do you feel like fuck it, this is way too much? Like even now, dude, I, I'm like sometimes even like a couple of days ago, I was like stressing out because I, I have a consistent schedule where I I make sure I have to post every Thursday and Sunday on YouTube. And if I don't get a video out, I feel so stressed out. And I have all this pressure on me where I sometimes I'm just like, fuck, this is this is too much. Where I yeah. sometimes like, you know, what, I'm going to take a break. And I actually did take a break not too long ago because it was like it was just too much. I have like I had all this stuff going on, like brand deals and stuff like that, and like timelines that I needed to meet and stuff like that. And it was just so stressful because then I have to truck drive. I have my kids. Like, it was so stressful, but, yeah. Dude, this is like... It's, it, it gets pretty stressful that, sometimes. It's because we're, we're talking earlier because um, one of the guys that we know, we love this guy so much, he became a dad at 18 too, and he's trying to figure out his way through life also. Uh, working jobs he got a new job right now he's very passionate about it and to hear your story and he drives an infinity q what q50 maybe q60 but it's, in That's similarities so. though it's dropped it's on rims this will haul's ass in it <laughs> that's what chilling but he became a dad at 18 also right and I think you're one, like, how your wife's been telling you and how I'm about to tell you, like, you after he, people hearing you now, like, they're going to realize, like, dad at 18, figuring it out, now successful and still grinding, oh, we can make it. It's it's possible, man. I feel like it really comes down to being consistent. Mm -hmm. it, it, if you're not consistent and, and, like, actually believing in yourself and, like... Really trying to, like, actually really believe in yourself, not just being like, oh, this can happen. Yeah. Like, like you got to know it will happen. You got to say, like, it's going to happen. Like, I remember, dude, like, there's times, because social media is something I've always wanted to do. And I, because I, before that, I would do uh, vlogs with my, with my family, like, back when, like, the Ace family was blowing up and all them, back in, like, 2018, 17. Mm -hmm. And it never really worked out. And I kind of just always been in that, but I've always like said like this is gonna work out somehow, some way. It's gonna work out. You gotta just be really confident in yourself. And so when you, when do you pick up that camera to like decide? Hey, you know what? I should just start recording now. Like even before trucking, or or are you saying All like right, so? Was it, so you said the first time you you picked up your your phone, it was put it backwards. Yeah, strap, yeah, that everything. was the trucking, but. Trucking. When when does trucking become not just your job and your career, but also your content creation? Um. So I would say last year around around this time, maybe like early, maybe late November, December. I kind of started where I was like, you know what, I need a. I'm gonna start doing content that revolves around trucking because before I was doing Mexican videos. So I I was on TikTok <laughs> before, and I would do like you know your Mexican win. And stuff like that, because I'm, I'm Mexican, my family's Mexican, so I kind of... That's right, I, that's right, that's yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know, so I kind of come from that background, so I would do, like, relatable videos like that, like, you know your Mexican win, or like, I would do this series where I was like, you know you're Mexican when you've listened to these songs, and mm. I would play all the songs, you know, and that, started, Adventures back, that yeah. started going viral and stuff like that, so I kind of started then, and then I started trucking, uh, doing trucking content when I realized, like, okay, I don't know what else to do. Like, mm. I'm kind of running out of ideas. And my my boy, shout out to my boy Isaac Lepke, he also does TikTok. He told me, he was like, hey, man, like, you should do trucking content. And I was like, nah, like, that, that wouldn't interest people. And I remember I tried doing one, and it flopped, dude. It had no views or it had like probably like five, ten views in like a couple hours. And I, was, and I told them, I screenshotted it. I was like, you know, what? like, look, it, it's, it's not going to work out. I was like, I'm just going to stick to what I'm doing right now. And then I remember one day I was kind of like, it was five in the morning and I did my logbook and I showed people how to, how I do it. And when I woke up, it had like 40,000 views. So I was like, okay, so maybe, maybe people are interested in this. And that's kind of when I started to like do more trucking content. So back like 2021. And the, is that when or you, 22. is that when you said like, all right, we can, yeah, we that's can make when, a run? Yeah. When I, when I realized that people actually kind of were interested in this stuff, I was like, okay, like maybe, 
maybe it'll work out. And before I wasn't doing POV videos. I was kind of just doing more like informational videos in, 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 a, in a sense and like telling people like why truck drivers sleep on the side of the road or how many hours we have driving or why we have this many hours to drive during the day. And then something kind of just switched where I was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, a POV and I'm going to do a voiceover. And then once I did that, that's when like when I found my niche is that how you say it? Your niche, niche, niche. 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 We're, yeah. we're not very. Si, si es español es niche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's when I found it, and that's when that's when everything kind of started taking off. Well, actually, I, I, I'm lying. I did a video with him. I don't know if you guys have seen it. We have seen everything. Where bro. he was, he he was doing a, a dance on the on the countertop. Yeah. And that video, literally, man, has over. I think right now has over 30 million views. And from that video posting it, I remember posting it. It was December 12th when I posted it. It was like around 11.30 when I posted it. I wasn't supposed to post it. I just posted it because he wanted me to post it. And I woke up to over a million views on that video. And I was like, oh, damn. Jeez. And after that, it was kind of just like uphill. And that's when I started doing the POVs. Yeah. And then that went uphill too. And it, all my videos were getting a lot of views. And I wasn't used to it. I was like, oh, damn. Like yeah. every video I'm posting is. You had one video that blew up and it fed everything else. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's crazy. I mean, that, that's kind of like how me and like, I always tell him, right? And I believe in this shit too, where you get one viral video and that viral video just showcases everything else that you're really good at. Yeah. Which is not just that one viral video. You have other videos that are similar just they never got that that sunlight yeah, yeah, yeah and now with this one that went out everything else is like oh wait we love this fool he he does this so this is like a dude that isn't just truck driving anymore he's he's showcasing the fatherhood showcasing what goes on behind um trucking and just being him yeah and it's crazy because i remember after that video is when um, you guys, I'm sure you guys know, you guys know who Duno is? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Duno, that's when he. That's the homie. Yeah, yeah, shout, he, out yeah. shout out Duno. Shout, shout out to Duno. Duno, man. He followed me and I remember telling him, I was like, oh shit, like Duno followed me. Like, I remember he commented on it and everything. I was like, that's crazy. House of Highlights commented on it. And I was like, damn, like this is crazy. I was like, I don't even know what the hell's going on right now. Yeah. I think when one of our viral videos too reached Duno, he reached out, I think like on a Monday morning, Friday night, we were podcasting with him. And this was like I think one of our first, one of our first big guests, bro. That literally when we, we had like I think the intro to that video when he walked out, we're all just hugging each other like, what the fuck just happened? Like we, we just, just we looked at each other we're like what the fuck? Just yeah, happened? like <laughs> and it was like a turn of events because we podcasted with him, and this was in the city of Baldwin Park, and then we went to a bar out after just to like go chill, celebrate, and then we partied with with a celebrity boxer and we're like what the what's going the on fuck is and going on and that's the that's like the that right there is proof of how strong social media really is mm -hmm. how like it can get you to people that you have no idea are watching you and they're actually watching you yeah and it's crazy how how powerful social media really is what keeps you that's you do a lot of stuff bro so you, you work for your uncle right you're trucking yeah. <laughs> You're a YouTuber, TikToker, you're a dad, and not just a dad of one. Three. Of three. <laughs> three. Damn. Of three. I can't even handle myself, bro. What the fuck? There was no TV present at the time. <laughs> there was no TV? What do you mean? What? <laughs> Haven't you heard that phrase, like, in oh, Hispanics? Yeah, yeah, I have. Like, a, you know, like, back then, I, I think my dad has eight brothers and sisters. Damn. Yeah. And my mom has another set. Yeah, like even six, my, my my dad, he's he's one of five. five where you, where are your parents from? From Guanajuato. Where you oh, okay. Cisco's from there. Oh, for us? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Cisco's from there. When Probably related. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> my dad. <laughs> that, so we, that, I think that's one of the phrases that they say, like when you have a lot of kids, oh, it's because uh, anterior no había, no, 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 no había, no había, no había tele. Or <laughs> <laughs> like it's like when COVID, when when the pandemic happened and everything, everybody was were, home. Yeah, everyone was home. There's people getting pregnant. It's like no one had anything better to do. Yo estaba solito en el cuarto. Eh? <laughs> Fucking COVID babies, I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Memo, Memo, Memo. My brother-in-law. My brother-in-law. My uh -huh. sister had a kid during COVID. Ah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs. Why do you laugh, bro? Because he's saying all like, "Fuck, that's me." <laughs> I lived through this myself. So. 
being a dad of three, what, how do you, how the hell do you balance this? I don't know, man. I still try <laughs> to figure that out every day, dude. It's so, it, it's, it's hard to say the least, but I, I managed to somehow do it. I, I don't, I don't even know how I do it. I just, I just do it, honestly. And is there at any point you feel bad for being like, What's the farthest you, you go for trucking, or how long do you go being out in trucking? So for trucking, I usually only I only stay in California. I don't I don't do over the road because my uncle doesn't do that. So if obviously if he did, I would be doing it because I'm working for him. So I would do whatever he's he's yeah. hauling. So we only stay up north, but there's times where I'll be gone for five five days straight and I won't be home. And even though I'm still in the same like three hours away, I'm in San Francisco, three hours away, I can't go home because it's so busy that I'll have to sleep in my truck or whatever. So it's like, essentially, I'm not over the road, and I'll get a lot of shit about that too on TikTok. Like, oh, you're not an over the road driver. You just stay, you're local, this and that. But I'm like, well, yeah, I am, but I still miss miss out on like, like say for like his first day of school or like stuff like that. There's stuff that I still miss out on that, that I, even though I still stay in California, I won't be home for sometimes five days straight. I'll be sleeping in the truck. So, I'm sorry to bring this up, but does did that at first cause like an issue? Is or like how does this work? Because for the the guys that are already truckers and have a whole family, how does this work for relationship wise? I feel like you kind of just have to have because I I get a lot of comments too where like there's a stereotype where truck drivers their wife always cheats on them and stuff like this i i that, that's the number one comment i get they're like oh yeah you're doing all this but your wife's at home cheating on you but i feel like you have to find the right person that's willing to actually that's really willing to hold it down for you and and you know like i i trust my wife i like we've been together for over 10 years or 10 years this year and so like congratulations I, congratulations yeah, thank you we've been together since high school so like i like i don't ever think of that and I just I feel like you have to have the right person that's willing to to hold it down for you and not even get entertained by by that stuff. And I feel like the, everyone's different, but you have to find the right person that is willing to like, oh, you know what, like you know, like just hold it down. Oh, I'm still looking, homeboy. I'm still looking. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still young. You're still young, man. Keep so looking. You're younger than me. Dylan, but open your eyes. Make sure you look in the right places. <laughs> you, you're out there. I'll find you. Don't not, worry. At, n- not at the club. Not at the club. You not, can't follow no, 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 no. the club. I don't go to the club to find a girl. Hell no. <laughs> if you see, if you see my take songs, if you see, if you see, bro, I dance alone. <laughs> I dance alone. Se me calla allá atrás. Se me calla. <laughs> oh man, don't go out with Dylan. That guy's, that guy's a fun time. But uh, has there been a trip that you have taken? That was probably, or a moment in your life in trucking and being a YouTuber, being a TikToker, being an influencer in a sense, that was just hard for you. Like, it, was there a moment where you were just like, I can't do this no more? Yeah, man. The first day I actually, because um, I was so used to being home every night with my wife and my kids. And I remember the first night I spent my night in the truck I remember that night I had a like I I I was crying I I couldn't I couldn't um handle like just being gone I remember calling my brother-in-law and because he works with me as well and telling him like hey like how did you do this like it's normal like it's like it it even happened to me like I remember the first night I was I was crying too so like he kind of helped me out through the like feeling sad and like not being able to be there for them, like say if something happened, I wasn't, I wouldn't have been able to be there. I was so far away, you know. So it was like the first night I I spent away from them was probably one of the hardest nights I I've ever had. How do you get over it? You just gotta keep keep pushing. Keep got I I'm doing it for them. It's a sacrifice. Everything's a sacrifice. If you're not willing to sacrifice something, I feel like nothing will work out. So I know that me sacrificing my time with them, being home, uh, it all works out. And, like, thank God, it's everything's been working out in my favor because of trucking, which I never thought it would have worked out this way. I always thought, like, social media, I would have had to have people like me, like, for my personality or stuff like that or, like, kind of like uh, like people who do family vlogs and stuff like that. That's how I always thought social media was, but... Like, little did I know, like, people were so interested in this trucking stuff that they support and watch me so much that it, it's, I'm able to, 
like do this as a full time job as well. Cause you're about to hit a million subscribers. Yeah, right? dude, any day now, hopefully, man. Yes, sir. I I hope by the time this comes out, it's ready to million. When will this come out? So you know, one week from now. Week one week from I now. I hope, man. I hope because I <laughs> I hit nine hundred thousand two weeks ago, and I'm at nine sixty seven right now. I think. You better you better take a shot for us once. once <laughs> <laughs> I know when it, how you said if you speak it into existence, you know. Yeah, and I I feel like. I'm not really like a spiritual person like that, but mm. I feel like I I I really do believe in like manifestation is real. I feel like I've always manifested all this. I didn't know how it was gonna happen. I just yeah. always felt it, and I I would always talk about it. And I remember even, dude, I I when I was doing like our family vlogs, I wrote out a check for myself from YouTube, and I I got a blank piece of paper, and I wrote. From Susie, I don't, I don't know how to say her last name, the owner of YouTube. I went from Susie uh, to Alex Nino in the amount of, and I, I think I put like $10,000. And I just put it underneath my bed, and I just left it. And that's when the, the vlogs didn't work out or whatever. I kept, like, doing other stuff. And then I, I always kept that in the back of my head. I was like, damn, like, maybe it's not real. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, now I'm doing YouTube. I got my first check from YouTube, and, like, like, it, it really is, if you really do truly believe in yourself, it's possible. As long as you actually really do believe in yourself, I feel like anything's possible. Well, when you got your first check from YouTube, what did that feel like? What did that oh, look like? Man, I was, we don't got to tell the number, but yeah, just like, what? I, I Honestly, it, it really... Did you get new rims? Huh? No, I didn't get, <laughs> I didn't get new rims yet. I, I'm working on that, but... It, it was crazy, man, because obviously I have this trucking job. I was still making it. I still make an income. And then to have this extra income come in, I was just like, oh, damn, like, this is crazy. Like, this is like literally like it's life life changing money that like I never thought would be possible. And I remember writing I, when I got my first check, I remembered that check. And I was like, I wrote a check for myself back in 2017 that one day it would happen. And I forgot about it because I didn't think it would happen. And then, like, look at now, it's like really happening. How long ago was, uh, how long more was it when you wrote your first check until when you got it? Uh, so it was in 2017, and I didn't get it barely until last year in March. Was it was it the same amount? Was it the m amount you thought it would be? Uh, no, it, w it was a little, it was a little less. But then after, literally after that first check, it went from, um, it went from a certain amount, and then it went. It just doubled. <laughs> and every month, it just kept doubling and doubling and that's doubling. Right, that's right. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, dude, this is, like, real. Like, I don't even have to work. But I was like, I can't. Like, I like I love trucking, and I'm going to use this money to eventually buy my own truck and then, like, just do what my uncle yeah, does. Yeah, because if you think about it, if you give up what blew you up even more, like, what other content are you going to get into? Exactly. And that's what I. that's why, like, recently I've been doing, like, where – I'll do like uh, content where like I'm like cooking in my truck and people seem to love it. Still. You did the McDonald's one. Yeah, I just did the McDonald's <laughs> one and people seem to love it. So like I kind of just keep it going. I'll still do like my my vlogs where I'm like trucking, like my day in the life and stuff like that. But like sometimes I I feel like I have like where I kind of want to like do something more than just trucking. So in a sense, can we say that you don't like being comfortable? Yeah, I don't. I don't like being comfortable at all, man. I feel like I'm always thinking like. I, I always think of the worst, and in a way, I'm always like, okay, social media isn't forever, so what happens if next month I don't get the same amount? So I'm always thinking, like, I, I need to do better, so that's why I'm always saying, like, I want to invest the money I'm making right now into buying a truck, because I know trucking is for sure income. You see trucks all the time. I'm sure you see hundreds of trucks yeah. on the freeway in L.A. all the time. Always. So the money's always there for trucking, so I'm just like, I'm going to use it as an advantage that I'm making this money and I'm going to invest it into a truck and buy my, my own truck. I want to buy my own truck this year. So hopefully I, well, I want to get in my house first and then buy my truck. That's right. That's right. That's right. I feel like, oh, man. I feel like what, what you said right now, what you asked is a valid question, a very, very valid question. But at the same time is, is asking, do you want to be average? Because the average person expects the bare minimum. Yeah. And he yeah. doesn't expect that. No, I he always, always wants more. Yeah, I always want more. Even like, there's times where like I'll be like, like, like view count. Say like, say before I would have been happy with a hundred thousand views. I know if I if I get like a hundred thousand, like I'm I'm content with it. But then I'm like, I want more. Like I like you always want 
more. And I like, feel like it's good to always want yeah. more. Because once, once you hit a certain a certain pinnacle of your life, you see that you can get it. You yes. see that you can make it. Yeah. What more can I get? Exactly. How much more? When can I get it? What could I do? What else needs to be done? And it's always good to a certain extent. But then when you kind of start, like, there's, it's it's good to be like that, but then at, after a point, it kind of sounds like you're being greedy and not grateful. Mm. Uh, like when, like you're still getting a good amount of views or say money or whatever, but then you want more. But then you got to realize, like, okay, like, like this is still good. Even like if a year ago, me would have been happy with what I got this month, but now that I'm like, I can see how much more I can get. I'm like, I want more. I want more. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you're not doing it for the money. You're doing it for the love. Exactly. What, what did our homeboy say? What, who? Our homeboy uh, Jakarta. <laughs> if you ain't doing it for love, then what are we doing, bro? <laughs> exactly. And exactly, man. And if, and if I was really actually doing it for the money, I would have stopped truck driving a long time ago. I w- I would have stopped exactly. truck driving a year ago. But I I genuinely love doing this. That that was like oh I was about to ask because it's like you're getting these. Decent checks, we'll say decent, <laughs> that you don't need to work a nine to five or you don't need to work any other job besides making content full time. Yeah. But I mean, how we're doing it, we're doing this, doing it, we're double dipping because, uh, bro, like, what does it interfere with? It doesn't interfere with anything. We're still doing what we got to do every time. Yeah, yeah. Does, does it become stressful? Yes, it does. Yes, it, it comes. It's super stressful all the time, man. That's I, I didn't want to be here this morning, bro. I, got, I lost my voice. <laughs> I'm sick. I'm chilling. You just gotta make it I'm happen. Tired. You gotta make it happen. What did we say before we got here? It's gotta get done. It's, it's, it's gotta get it's done. It's gotta get done, bro. And and my thing is, every time you put something out there that you're gonna do, it's up to you to do it. Mm-hmm. And if you post it, you really have because then your word is your bond. Exactly. If you tell someone, yo, I'm going to be there, and then you're not there, then they're never going to trust you ever again. Exactly, because then they're going to be like, oh, well, maybe he's going to cancel again. They're not going to have that same trust they had in you the first time. Yeah. Exactly. So you said you brought up earlier you had brand deals. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> fucking right, bro. Yeah, and it, it's it's crazy. What was your what was your first brand deal that you, that you hit? That I re- the very first, first one, it was a brand um, – it's called Coldest Water. It was like a little water bottle. It was, they only paid me like 200 bucks. It was That was my first ever brand deal. Like before I even started doing POVs, YouTube, anything like that, I remember I had to make 10 videos for them just to get those 200 bucks. But I was so happy that I got my first brand deal. And then after that, the next one was I did a Verizon. I did a video for Verizon. And that was one of the checks where I got a big check from a big company. But I was like underselling myself, I guess. I had told them a certain amount and then I have... Bo- my boys out here, I don't, you guys know who Sweet Tea is? Sweet Tea. The Twisted Tea? No. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we don't, but we will. Um, they, they, they told me, like, no, nah, dude, like, you can, you can ask for more. Like, ask for more. So I asked for more, and I remember, like, that first, like, when they told me, okay, like that's, like, that's a good amount, I was like, oh, shit, like, these brands fucking, they pay. Like, I'm like, I wouldn't, ever, I wouldn't pay that much to, <laughs> you get me? It's but, crazy. But you're saying you wouldn't pay that much because you're underselling yourself. Yeah. Like, your value of views, content, and yourself is so much more, th- wor- is worth a lot more than what you even imagine. Yeah, exactly. And so, the- like, Verizon, can you get my bill down? Because my bill is a little <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, man, to get this, right, you're getting a big brand deal when you're, if I bring it a little bit more back, like, you're just, you're a daily driver trucking for your family and for your for your life but you're here and you're literally getting the views and the love from all these people you never anticipated ever exactly and I, that's why i've always like i i've never thought like people like influencers like that would f- like would follow me like recently i had um vlex he followed me and i was just like what the fuck like all, like all this stuff is like Re- like it's reaching so many people that I wouldn't even think would want to follow me yeah. that are following me. So it's, 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 it's crazy. So do you, how do you value yourself? What's the value that you give yourself? What is that? I'm him type of, type of deal. I don't, I, I don't even think that way, man. Like no. I, like I said, I feel like I'm like, I still kind of think like, why me type? Like, I feel like I'm not like, I, like I'm so hard on myself. That's why I say like, my wife's always like, no, like don't be hard on yourself. So I, I feel like, in a way, I'm. St- I don't even. 
I don't I don't think that way at all. I'm just like like what like you guys could have had anybody on this podcast. So you guys could have had someone bigger than me, but you guys chose me. So I'm just like why me? Like in my head I'll be like like why me? I I always saw this dude and obviously you saw the the video that was going viral right now. Yeah. I'm like why me, bro? It's, it's like crazy, it, and, man. And he always <laughs> tells me like why not you, you know? Yeah, why not oh, why not you? Why not us? Exactly. Why not me? Like Everybody sees that you're doing the work, right? Your wife, your ki- your kids being, because how old is your son? He's six. Six, and then? Yeah, the other one's three, and then I have a one-year-old. He took they, his time. He took his time. He took God. time. Yeah. He took time, you know, a little space out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they may not see the work that's being done currently, may not understand it. Your wife does. You do. But it's just like all this fucking work that's being done from beginning to now why don't you deserve the flowers? Why don't you deserve that big break that, you know what, I'm meant for a lot much more than I ever anticipated because, how you said, you may not believe in, in, a, in a certain thing, but there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're blowing up. There's a reason why this is going viral. It's reaching everybody and anybody because, not because of the lifestyle, but because of what Alex is putting out there. So at one point, at one point, like you have to give yourself those type of flowers. That kind of like, all right, I'm doing this. I did this. I feel like I, I might feel that way maybe when I hit a million subscribers. Nah, maybe. watch it. In, in, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it on like this. Watch you get a million subscribers, you're gonna want two million, bro. And it's gonna be yeah, like, yeah, and it's always like that. You, that's why it's crazy. Like people always want more. That's why I feel like I need a, I need to enjoy what's happening right now and live right now and not worry too much about what's going to happen tomorrow and like kind of just live in the present because I feel like I'm always thinking like what next what next like I just finished editing a video at the hotel that we were staying at I uploaded it um it's private right now but now I'm thinking like okay what do I do next and I feel like it's always just like a what's next what's next what's next type of situation that's, that's completely fine bro we're always on that mentality yeah, I feel we're, like that's what social uh, social media is like. I feel like a lot of people see it as like, oh, you just pick up a camera and record, which, you, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what you do. Pick yeah. up a camera and record. But I feel like it's a super stressful environment in a sense because you're always, you're, it, your brain's working 24-7, dude. Yeah. You're like, I need to do more. I Like, what do I do next? Or how, how can I get my views up? What could I do next to get my views more than the last video? Yeah. You always, you always got to take that step back. And, and like, just I like, said, like I said, it's fine to think that way. It's a great mentality, but you always got to stop and be like, like I, I'm, I'm grateful for what I, where I'm at right now. Yeah. And my wife always tells me that. She always tells me, like, you need to be, like, grateful for what we have right now because two years ago we didn't have this, and you would – you would have been so happy to have this two years ago. And, and it's not that you're not grateful for it, yeah, but it's just super like grateful, you're not man. acknowledging it at that moment. Yeah, no. It's a million followers. I feel like everything followers, everything just know? goes so fast. Like you time may be going slow, but in your mind you're just racing like, damn, I'm already here. Fuck, man, but I gotta do this and I gotta do this. And so many other things that you know in order for us to enjoy that moment, it takes a lot more. To kind of just step back. Exactly. I think saying it, take a step back, is a lot easier than actually doing it. Yeah. Sure. So when really we actually is. get to do it, we're just like, um, like you said, damn. you said in the beginning, we always need that balance. Yeah. Mm. He balances me out. I balance him out. That's your balance. Right that, there, yeah, bro. she is. She literally That's is. Your she's balance my balance right there. Right there. She, she reminds me every day that. She grabs you by the orejas? Huh? By the las orejas? Yeah, I know. Fucking get over here, away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she she really is my balance, man. I'm like super blessed to have her in my life because I feel like without her, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So I think uh, uh, one of the questions that we actually got on what we posted to in the morning was like, "What's your idea of love?" I feel like just being able to, uh, as like cliche as it sounds, kind of. I feel like just being like being able to be yourself. With someone like, dude, I feel like no one would understand our relationship because I feel like we're so. Um, <laughs> Hold up! I was like, I was like, is, I was like, I was like, is it the ear? I was like, is it the headphones? Los, los compas, los compas. Jose, ya estuvo, güey. I feel like it's like no one understands. Like, dude, like the way we talk to each other. I feel like if someone heard us talking to each other, 
out in public, they'd be like, what the fuck? Like, why are they saying that? But we're just so comfortable with each other. And, like, I've been with her since I was 14 years old. So I'm just like, I like, I've literally, yeah. she's watched me grow up. <laughs> We've went through, like, yeah. being broke and, like, just, like, a hard, like, like ups and sen- ups and downs of relationships and stuff like that, that like we've kind of like been through it all. That like she's like, I feel like I'm just so comfortable around her that I feel like in order to make something work, you gotta just be super comfortable around the person you love. What's the worst thing? How the fuck do you guys talk to each other? <laughs> ah fuck! I, like like I like say like <laughs> like my brother-in-law laughs at, at at this all the time, but like and people like look at it crazy, but I'm just like like there'll be times where like. Like she'll like she'll call me like bitch or like I'll say like hey what's up bitch or like like just stuff like that. There's there's some times where I want to drop this dude, bro. Yeah, like but we spent twenty four seven. But we're not in a relationship. Fool, what are you talking about? <laughs> hey, it ain't about the relationship. It's about the time spent next know, to each other, bro. Like right now, Alex City went like literally in a couple more minutes. Be like, let's get down, fool. I, I, I told just throw it down. I'm like, <laughs> oh, before we started, I was like, I'll drop this dude anytime. Bro. I said, fuck it, let's why not? But that's a relationship you guys know. Yeah, and like my family, like sometimes I'll catch myself like saying that in front of my family, or like she'll be telling me in front of my family, and they're kind of just like, like they're looking at us like, like what, like why are they talking to each other? Like are they mad at each other? <laughs> I'm just like, no, like that's just how we are, and that's why my brother-in-law will laugh because I'll be like. Like, I'll say something dumb and, like, I'll add bitch in it. And, like, he'll just start laughing because my sister wouldn't yeah. wouldn't like that. But, like, me yeah. and her are just so comfortable with each other that, like, we don't get mad. Like, there's a time and a place to say, obviously, if I was mad, I wouldn't disrespect her like that. Yeah, and, like, but, like, if we're just, like, talking or whatever in our, like, vocabulary, like, it's just, like, so natural to us. <laughs> but, like, we know, like, if we're mad at each other, we're not going to disrespect each other. I've never, like, went off on her like that where, like, I use that word while we're mad. Because I, I know, like, I'm not going to disrespect her like that. It's yeah. mother of my kids, so. Man, so three kids, ten years. Crazy. That, how does this work? That sounds like a life sentence. Three <laughs> kids, ten <laughs> years, like, god damn. You, you got a license yeah. for this? <laughs> it's just, I, I don't know, man. I feel like you both really have to want to. For, for, the, for the people <laughs> trying to figure out how to give a long-lasting relationship. I feel like you got to. You guys both, like, say there's something that you do that your your wife or your girl doesn't like. You have to be willing to, like, okay, like, she doesn't like this. Let me change it. You have to be willing to want to change something in order to make it work. And there's people that I know, me and her have, like, people that we've known that they're like, oh, well, like, Alex changed, so maybe this person will change for me. And then they don't change, but that's because they don't really want it. Like, you guys both have to want something in order for, to make it work. Mm. So what was one thing you had to change? Um, I feel one thing that I probably had to change was, and she's like, I can list a lot. <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> Let me write them down for y'all right um, now. Let me take a little leave that out real quick. I feel like just being more, uh, um, I would say respect. Not not resp- not that I'm not responsible or anything, but like kind of being more like like on it and like kind of getting stuff done because I'm like I procrastinate a lot, and that's something that she doesn't like because like obviously if I'm procrastinating, I'm not getting stuff done. So like I feel like you kind of just have to like be like okay, like I'm gonna do it because I want to be with you and yeah. I'm gonna make this work because I want I want us to work out. And if, if you guys are both putting the same energy into it, it's gonna work out at the end. But it takes two. That's the point. It takes two. It takes two to make I can't, it work. I, I can't be putting in the 50 and her not put the 50 because it's not going to work out. We're, we both do stuff together where we, we're happy with each other to know that. Like, we're both putting in the effort, and it's going to work out. Like like I've said, and I've, I've been on one relationship before. It didn't go so well. She cheated on me. No. Oh. <laughs> um, so it's like, it's, it's, it's not that I relate to you, but... Like what you said right now, the fifty fifty part, I feel like it's it's a hundred and a hundred percent. Because you give your full effort, she gives her full effort. So it it, it kind of realistically is two hundred percent. Exactly. And that's how it should be like done. You both have to actually want it. Because you can you can be doing it and then sh- like she's not putting in the work, it's not gonna work out. Exactly. Because what did they exactly. say? If he, I love us for the both of- Hell no. I love us for the 
Love Keep loving, baby. <laughs> Keep fucking loving. Love me, you love me, and and it works out. But it, it's just, I think just what like how the way life it goes, right? Like, there's ups and downs. There's work that comes into effect. There's kids that come into effect. There's situations, and there's an understanding at one point. Yeah. And if there's no clear understanding, then it be it does become an issue. And you know, it just it sometimes it just takes a turn differently and. How you said, maybe others don't agree or don't understand. As long as we understand, we're good. That's not their life. This is your life. Ex- exactly. And there's a lot of people, like, they'll be like, oh, you're a Mandilon or this and that. But I'm just like, like. That's right. Hey, like, that's right. That's right. That's I right. I always think, right. like, happy wife, happy life, man. Like, at the end of the day, I'm the one coming home to my wife. And if she's not happy because I'm making you guys happy, that's not going to benefit me at all. Then it's going to create a toxic environment for my kids. And I, I don't want that. I, I exactly. want to be able to get, uh, me and her, like, we get along so good. Literally, like. We do stuff together all the time, and, like, there's times where, like, her mom will, like, right now her mom has our kids, and we're able to come out here together, and, like, we'll enjoy our our time together, and there's times where, like, they'll watch our kids, our parents or her parents will watch our kids, and me and her will go out on a date, and I feel like that's something that really needs to, like, to keep a relationship going. I feel like you need that time away from the kids. As much as we love our kids, there's, you always have to have the time for you and, and her. Sure. Whichever it is. And I feel like a lot of, there's a lot of guys too that probably won't agree with it. There's a lot of like machistas are like, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But then that's, that's why at the end of the day, those people are the same people that are miserable at the end of the day because they let their ego get in the way of making their wife happy or whatever. Yeah. Emilio, can la verga, Emilio? Emilio. All right. Ready to rock and bro. Everything's on, right? That one's on too. It's recording. It's reco- That's like probably one of my biggest years, bro. Recording a whole video and not recording. Every, everything you say will and can be used against you. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's on there, bro. Like, I think what some people like don't realize is like when we post something, we're giving ourselves up for any sort of feedback, backlash. Any sort of, of it, comments. You're putting yourself out there, so there's going to be opinions. Yeah, there's going to be opinions. And this week, since the video of, of Dylan is, like, really going good. And I think some people just miss the context, right? Yeah. The, the point of the video of 30 seconds, 10 seconds, a minute, is to get you to watch the whole thing. Yeah, ideally. Okay. Yes. But if you only want to watch that, then your opinion is only going to be based off a minute, but not based off of... What happened, what was said after after that? After what was said before leading up to it, what and was the whole idea? I feel like the major thing about it is, I'm talking about my parents. Yeah. I'm no, talking yeah, about that was my crazy. personal That's parents. That's your personal experience, and people are like, well, that didn't happen to me. Yeah, like, like, I'm no, not talking like, about you, I'm talking about my exactly. experience. Exactly, people are like, no, fuck my parents. I was like... Okay, I know. I think you're entitled to you're nah, entitled to your. You're messed up, bro. They're like, I put my parents in a in a, in a home. <laughs> I don't gotta deal with them anymore. I'm like, that's, that's, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, this depends on their situation, whatever that's, that is. That's their relationship. Yeah. So I will ask this because someone did ask this today in the morning, and uh, ho- I, hopefully you can answer this. How do you deal with mental health in a Hispanic household? I get laughed at every time I attempt to approach them about it. Um, I feel like, so my, my household, I feel like my dad was my, well, my dad still is really like quiet and like, he doesn't show emotion like that. He's like a typical Mexican dad where he just goes to work, gets shit done and doesn't show when he's, and I know there's times where he's sad, but he's not going to tell us, he's not going to tell me. So I feel like I kind of, in a, in a way grew up like that as well. Even now is something that I feel like I, I really need to work on is getting my emotions out there with her. Because I'm not, like, me personally, I'm not comfortable with talking about my emotions because that's how I grew up in my household. Yeah. So I feel like that's kind of hard to answer because I feel like I am I would not, in a sense, where my dad would laugh at me because I know if I were to talk to my mom about it, my mom would, like, with open mind, she would talk to me about it. But, I like, I would see how my dad was and I kind of would, like, just keep stuff to myself. All the, Even now, I still do it. Where I just bottle up all my my emotions. It's kind of hard to answer that question in a way. Because I feel like I can't, like I was never the type to want to go and talk to someone because of how I seen my dad, how my dad was. So it was how you were raised. Yeah. It's what you saw, what you were used to. Yeah. So now that we bring this up and, and shedding light on this, 
When do you feel like that time is for you then? I feel like now, man. I feel like every day I, like, there's times where, like, like me and my wife, like, we'll bicker or whatever. It's normal, you know? And there's times where, like, I'll just stay quiet. And, like, I'm just, like, in my head I'm thinking of stuff to say. But I can't get it out because I'm just, like, I'm so used to just, like, bottling up all my emotions that I feel like it has to reach a peak to where I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to let everything out. And that's when I do it, but I don't want to do that. I want to be able to talk about my emotions before it gets to that level. You, you get me? So if I could put you on the spot, man, and being very honest, and, and I've always say this, bro, like the thing about us here at this podcast, this show, we built this and we base this off of a safe space where we get people to talk about their emotions. Yeah. Like, you know, with no judgment because you can't judge a person when you know yourself, you've been through this. Yeah. We've been through anxiety. We've been through depression. We've been through mental health, suicidal thoughts, everything. There's nothing that we that has been going on that we ourselves have not been through. So we speak from experience. Yeah. So one of the questions I, I wanted to ask now that just it, it just comes into me was, what is probably one thing that you're fighting through and going through that a lot of people may not even know? Um, I feel like it would... Mm. It would have to be just being scared to not be as successful as I feel like I want to be. Or, like, not, like, kind of just being scared to let, like, my family down in a, in a sense to where I can't support them in a way that I want to anymore. Because, like, I've been through it where I was fucking broke and I couldn't afford stuff and then... Now that I'm in the social media stuff, like I said, like, so I feel like social media is like a hit or miss where like the algorithm has to be in your favor and you want it to be in your favor all the yeah. time that I feel like I'm just really scared to, to like let my, my wife and my kids down and like, we're like, just like scared to, to fail in, in a sense. And I feel like I always keep that to myself. And that's something that I'm always talk like thinking in my head, like, like, Oh, what if this video doesn't do good? Like, like, what if I don't make this much this month? Or like, it's always in my head. That I just like super, I'm super scared to fail at what I'm doing. How do you get over your fear? I feel like just by keep posting. Cause last year I remember like when I would, like when I tell you, like I would started getting paid from YouTube, it kind of would just like, I would take it month by month. So it's like one month, like, okay, I made this much. Next month, okay, I made this much more. Next month, I kind of just like, kind of just ride the wave. And I feel like you kind of just have to, um, like, just, like, literally just ride the wave. And I feel like that's that's what I do. Like, I just kind of, like, ride the wave, and I'm like, okay, like, this month, like, I'm just going to just let it be. Just let it do its own thing, and, like, whatever happens, happens. So one of the one of the things that, for the people that do follow you on social media, they see you take rides with your son. Yeah. You take him on trips. All the time. What's that feeling look like, man? What's, like, you taking your son to work? It's cool, man, <laughs> and, and, and not a lot of people can do it. There's a lot of companies that will actually fire you for doing that. And it's cool that my uncle lets me do that. And I take him all the time. He loves coming with me. I have a PlayStation back there, man. I have a TV. Can I go back. with you? Dude, <laughs> it's, can it's, can like, we ride, too? It's fun, man. I, I, I cook back there. It's like my little, it's like a little... It's your house. It's like a little It's home. a mobile house. Yeah, it's a little mobile house. Like, that's how that's how it would be like living in New York in a little fucking, a little tiny place where I have a TV, I have my PlayStation. So he, he, I'm super happy that my uncle lets me do it because not everyone could could do it. Man, what's that feeling as a dad when you're driving? And, <laughs> and I look up. I got to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> but your, your seat. Oh, the booster seat? The booster seat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you did a couple videos on it, and then today, like, I was rewatching. I was like, oh, shit, you forgot. But then you also drive with your son. Yeah. So what's the feeling when you look over to your right or to the back and your son is there? So I was telling my wife yesterday, and it, it plays with that same question you're asking me. I feel like whenever I look at him, I'm just like, I know he's going to remember this when he's older. Because there's times where, like, my I remember vividly my dad before kindergarten, he would take me on a bike ride every morning. And I remember that all the time. So I'm like, I know when he's older, he's going to remember all this and being like, oh, I used to go with my dad in the truck or yeah. like I would spend time with him like this or like we would do these kind of videos or like yesterday he was just 
he was jumping on the on the bed in the hotel and i was like i know he's gonna remember this when he's older he's gonna be like i used to go with my parents to la for it to go do videos and stuff like that yeah so it's kind of like a, a like i get happy to like to know that he's gonna have these memories of me like god forbid something happens to me yeah or whatever he's gonna have these memories to 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 like think about and like oh i used to do this with my dad so when he watches this when he watches it when he's older fool I mean, you never know. It's, Maybe. It's, I feel like YouTube is only growing, bro. I feel like it's going to be around forever, honestly. It, someone, someone told us, and basically, when you post on YouTube, when you post any sort of video on social media, it's your diary. It really is. It, it, re <laughs> it really is, man, because I have videos on there from when we were doing videos. I have them private, but, like, every so often when I'm in the, on the road, I'll just watch them, and, like, I'll, like, I'm, like, damn, like, like, I remember being in that exact position, like, what I was doing that day, how I was yeah. feeling, and, like, it's crazy that it really is a diary in a sense, man. So, for your kids that are, like, man, I'm sure they're, they're your life. Uh, yeah. They're, your wife, your kids, your family's your life. And I know it, it's so, it's probably a little different today because you have your wife and your son here. But, like, when they watch this, from another perspective, what's like? What's that message that you give to them? Like, if they didn't know, um, I would. Hmm. How do I answer this? <laughs> Don't look I, at her, fool! Don't look at her. <laughs> <laughs> look at me, make eye contact with me. <laughs> so, like, so the question was, like, what would I, like, what message would I give to my son? If if your if your son and your wife didn't know this exact message. What would you tell them? Like, ah, it sounds so tough, but if today was our last day, what let's, would you tell let's them? Let's say you're stuck in an island by yourself and you got to send a message to your yeah. wife and your kids. Like, if today was your last day, bro, what, what would you want them to know that they may not know already? How grateful I am for them and how blessed I am to have them in my life and that everything I do is for them. And I know that there's times where I may be too like worried about finishing a video or editing a video, but everything that I do is for, I feel like I'm going to get emotional, man. I feel like- We want to see that. Let's go. Everything that I do is is really for them, man. Because I, I remember there being a time where like I couldn't even afford to buy him a cheeseburger. I remember him asking me like, he wanted a Happy Meal, man, and I couldn't, I couldn't um, buy him one. So I feel like everything that I do really is- for them and everything that I do will always be for them and everything that I do now like all the sacrifices I do staying like last night dude I got home at like one in the morning and I stayed up editing a video because I know that it's going to benefit them and I know that I'm going to be able to pay for like I'm going to be able to give them the life that that they deserve so everything that I do is always for them no matter how hard it is Shut and up. stressful I'm here about to cry bro and I, Fuck. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here about to cry because I even took my hat off. I got hot. <laughs> I, Man, bought, I, I, I bought myself my first <laughs> Happy Meal at 21 years old because my parents couldn't afford myself a Happy Meal, bro. I bought myself my first Happy Meal at yeah, 21 years old. To, it's, it's crazy, man. I and I relate to that so much because I'm just like, damn, I'm hot. I got to take like, this I, I, off bro, quick, like, bro. I, 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 I vividly remember... <clears throat> Like, not knowing what I was going to do to pay the rent. And my dad helping me paying the rent one month. And, like, I was just like, fuck, man. Like, this sucks. Like, I like, I remember seeing him, like, look in the fridge. And, like, there wasn't much. And, like, I was just like, fuck, dude. Like, I need to do something different. I need, I need to make, I need to do it to where I'm, like, he can, he, like, I can provide for them in a way. So I'm just, like, super, like, grateful for everything that I have right now. Yes. Oh, man, that, that was beautiful. That was, and, like, I know, like, he's looking at you now, bro. So it's like, what do you tell this kid, man? Like, what do you, like, he's looking at you, looking at his dad, doing his thing now and hearing this show, but driving. He's looking at you, bro. Like, what do you tell him? Like, he, he's probably not going to fully understand this. Uh, and, I know, and, and I know he doesn't. He's still a little kid, so he doesn't get, like, there's times where, like, he'll tell me, like, hey, Dad, like, come, like, sit down and, like, let's play. Because he plays WWE all the time on his PlayStation. <laughs> and so that's he'll right, be like, right, come right. sit down with me. But I'll be, like, editing a video. And I'm just like, 
like sometimes I I do like I'll just like okay I need to like sit down and like spend time with him and but then I'm just like okay I need to get this done still but I know because I know this is gonna benefit him in the long run this is gonna it's gonna benefit him in the better what happened <laughs> <laughs> so like because he's he's looking at you bro and I I, just, I want this moment not even just for us in this show man but for like you and when you walk out of here you. Remember this moment itself, but like he's looking at you, you're looking at him. What do you tell him? Everything you're doing, you went from McDonald's to a warehouse to getting fired and starting all over to taking a chance in trucking and then taking a chance on YouTube and social media when nothing in the world was promised besides your trucking. And he's looking at you now, and you're working, you're in the space, you're getting the light that you deserve, and you you humbly deserve a hundred million times. But for the times that you haven't been home and for the times that you have had to miss, what do you tell this young man that's looking up to his dad? That everything I do is, is for him and that every, I will always continue to – to be there for him, regardless of the fact if me and my wife aren't together, I will always be there for him, and I feel like I will always want more for him, and everything I do is for him and his little brothers. Look at him! Look at him! He's he's cheesy. And honestly, honestly, man, he's he's a super big. He's a like I so grateful for him. He's a, he's a big reason on why I'm he, here today. Like I tell you, that after that video of me with him. Everything yeah. just took off, man. So, like, I feel like he's one of our biggest, obviously, both of our, all our boys are our biggest blessing. I yeah. just, I love them so much. Man. You want to come on the pod? You want to come on the show? You want You want to sit down? You want to come and take my spot? You can take okay, my spot Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Right, let's go, let's come go. on. <laughs> Look, where, where, super nervous. where he's <laughs> sitting. Right there, where, right there where he's sitting. I, I didn't call him. Be careful, buddy. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. So, what do you think about your dad? <laughs> You're nervous, huh? Yeah. It's my second time doing this. Ooh. Yeah, he did it. He did it last night. And he was he was super super nervous, man. And I I he can give you a full answer if he knew he wasn't on the spotlight. The, the, we turned the cameras off. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they're not recording. I want to, like, you were just wearing, you were just wearing the Apple headphones and everything, playing any games. So what would you, um, what do you, do you look up to your dad? Yeah. What, what was one thing your dad taught you or has taught you? Um, to, like, turn on stuff so that way when I grow up. <laughs> oh, you, you son of a gun! You like going to work with your dad? Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. What What was one of the funnest things you've done with your dad when you're working? Um, doing the pallets. So I'll I'll get him down and like I'll have I'll teach him how to use the fork like the pallet jack and stuff like that, and I'll have him get down with me at certain packing houses that let us, and I'll teach him like okay like. This is how you have to do it. And I'll put it in a slow mode so that way it doesn't, like, when he presses <laughs> he the button, it, it doesn't, like, go straight back to him. So I put it in a little, it's called turtle mode. Yeah. And it goes super slow. So I'll teach him how to how to use the forklift, the little pallet jack and stuff like that. Yeah. So it, are you, you're going to be the next worker, huh? You're going to help out your dad? You just said yesterday that, what, what, what do you want to do when you grow up? Yeah, what do you want to do when you grow up? Just like it. It's crazy, man. I feel like that's why that's literally the reason why I do what I do, man. Cause because I know he's watching me and I know that if I do something wrong, he's gonna see it. So I tried my best to be as perfect as possible. And I know that there's times where like I like I, everyone gets frustrated and stuff, but I try my best to be as perfect as a dad as possible. Your dad's perfect, huh? Yeah. You love your daddy? <laughs> Without a doubt, huh? Without a doubt? Like, you love him no matter what? Damn, bro. How do you do this? How do you work through this? This is tough. But um, 
if what's I mean, hopefully we can do this, but like, what's one thing you would tell your dad if he's not here? What would you tell him? If I wasn't, if I wasn't here, say I was, I was gone, and you would never, you would never see me ever again. What's something that you would tell me? That I miss you. Oh. And I love you. <laughs> I love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for giving us. This, these words, man, because you're fresh. Look at your, sh- your shoes are better than my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be a truck driver? You're a YouTuber? Just like your daddy. <laughs> okay, we can pause this. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hell yeah, bro. That was... oh, All right, man. pause that one real quick. Oh. One thing about... Our show, our podcast, our movement, more than anything, our movement, is people are always looking for an answer. When you go through a tough moment, when you're dealing with stress, anxiety, depression, and it has to do with work, with family, with friends, relationships, they always look for a quote. I don't know, we, we live through our quotes, we we always reside reside with them. With everything you've been through, everything you're going through, everything you're building, you have your little man right next to you, smiling, cheesing. With those ears <laughs> pierced, I'm telling you, man, my mom doesn't let me he's, have my ears pierced. He's just pierced. waiting to go to Target after this. I told him I would go take him to Target or to go buy hey, some toys after this. Tell me why. Noah, I love you, big guy, because the only way I can sit him down in a haircut is I'm taking him to Target. <laughs> Dude, that's he, how it was at first, too. Bro, we took him to Target, and he was, like he loves Paw Patrol right now, Spider-Man, and then he got like this... Oh, man, this toy he already has. It just had, like, two other fucking toys. It's like, no, dude, like, get another one. But why? I'm like, oh. never mind, forget it, dog. <laughs> You're good, dog, just get it. It's just like you got to let them Yeah, because his mom was like, dude, he really has that toy. I'm like, I couldn't say no, fool. Like, I couldn't <laughs> say no. But are you a big person on quotes, or how do you – what do you do personally when you're going through the tough moment? When you need to like reset, like reamp yourself in order to keep on going? I feel like I I I know what I've been through in the past and I know that at the end everything's going to work out in your favor. If you really do want something to work out, I feel like it it will work out. If you truly believe in yourself, it's going to work out. That's why I say like the whole manifestation stuff. Like I feel like if you really truly want something and you really manifest something, it's going to come true. Like dude, I I literally remember, man, I would be driving on the in my truck and I would pull over on the side of the road, man. I would I remember just just like like it sounds crazy, but I remember like yelling out just into like the fucking dark sky just yelling like I will hit 1 million subscribers. I will do this, I will do that, I will gain a following, my videos will do good, and like, look, like, almost a year later, man, everything's coming true, so I feel like if you truly, really believe in yourself, everything will line up for you, but you have to really believe in yourself, it can't be like a, oh yeah, it might happen, it's like, no, it's gonna, it's gonna fucking happen. And for the, the, your industry, man, your people that are in trucking dads that are missing out on time. What's the advice you give uh, to them? Dude, shout out to all those truck drivers that actually go on the road and put in the work where they're gone for two weeks, a month. Like, I don't know how the fuck they would do it, but, like, huge shout out to them because they, they're the ones actually putting in the work. And, like, I, I'm obviously in California, but... Like, these guys are going out, and I, I know for a fact that everything they're doing is going to benefit their kids or their family or even themselves mm-hmm. in the long run. So I just keep keep, keep them rolling, man, because as long as those wheels are rolling, you're going to be making money, and it's going to benefit your family. It's going to help. Dylan, did you have one today? Did you have one today instead of yesterday? <laughs> I had one yesterday, but we didn't end up filming it because I was a little too excited. <laughs> Two plus one. <laughs> 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 um damn hold up i forgot it real quick oh okay okay i got it i got it i got it. all right <laughs> let me clear the throat real quick <clears throat> wait wait whoa whoa hey, whoa no no no, no, no. Chill, hey, chill chill fool, relax, there's kids relax. present there's no, kids no we present. got kids relax <laughs> all right here here goes the quote real quick be careful <laughs> 
<laughs> this is exactly why I couldn't film this, yesterday. This is live and live and alive, <laughs> homie. You gotta you gotta be careful with what you wish for, because if you wish for rain for your crops, you gotta deal with the mud. So Oh, there it is. That's exactly there it fucking is. Honestly. I'm gonna tattoo it right here without my mom's permission. <laughs> <laughs> Ma, si miras esto, ya no soy tu hijo. <laughs> do you do you have a quote that you could give us? What what would you what would you tell like something? Like inspirational, like what would you tell someone that's watching you right now if they're going through a hard time or like whatever yeah, it is? Like for another little boy, what would you tell him? Like if there's another little boy that's sad that can't buy a toy because whatever reason, what would you tell them? If he didn't get the toy he really wanted, what would you tell that little that little boy? Like he can like do some yard work and then they can pay him for something and then he can buy the toy that he wants. He said, "You gotta put that work in." <laughs> put Dude, work, man. what are you, bro? I, and we'll have him wash dishes at times, and we'll give him, we'll give him like five bucks or whatever, and he'll save up his money. He has a little, he has a little safe where he puts on all his money, and whenever he does something around the house, whether it's like pick up the toys that his little brothers make, and yeah. he, he hates yeah. doing it because he's like, "I didn't make the mess." <laughs> I'm like, "I know," but like, if he does it, like we re, we reward him with something. Yeah. And I feel like that's probably why he thinks the way he does. I think hopefully this hopefully this works. And um, when you're sad, what do you tell yourself, or what do you do? Um, I try to stop crying, and then sometimes I feel better. Mm. Sometimes I don't. When you see your your little brothers crying, what do you tell them? I help them. He plays a big role in helping his mom when I'm gone, or. Just in general, bro, like, when I'm home and stuff, he helps us out so much, so. Or, like, when Shia, remember? What? When he almost fell off the table. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> and you, you help him out. Yeah, so he's always super helpful, man. He, I feel like, since he's the firstborn, we, like, he's, he's so good with, like, watching over his brothers, and even though he fights with them, <laughs> he's, he always watches over them, and. He's a super good kid, especially when it comes to his brothers. What do you want your mommy and daddy to to know? If you could tell them something right now, without them being here, what would you tell them? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You love them? With all your heart? <laughs> okay, we can't. We, we can't. We're not going to ask anymore, but I, I honestly, I, I want to I wanna thank you for taking that time to make time for sitting down with us, being on the show, being on the podcast, bringing on your, your little right I appreciate you guys right having me, bro, for real. Is that I'm, I'm happy I was able to make it out here, too, dude. No, we're, we're happy and we're blessed, we're, man. We're happy even to have you here, bro. <laughs> even though I was a little late, I mean, you guys got that LA traffic, man. You, you know how that shit goes, man. Hey, Alex is lying because it's Sunday. There's no LA traffic today. <laughs> He's trying to play the traffic, but there's no traffic today. <laughs> yeah, everyone's at church. <laughs> Everybody's still sleeping, Alex. <laughs> Not us. But I, I do want to thank you, man. And I think everybody, after listening to this and watching this, they're going to see the fruits and labor of your hard work and your teaching, man, because you're not just a truck driver. You are an amazing dad, amazing uh, content creator, your amazing husband. And for the people that haven't known you and will get to know you, they better subscribe to reach that one million if they haven't so just yet. Man. And <laughs> I, I, right, and and honestly, thank you, man. And if no one has told you, I'm, I'm sure your wife has, but if no one else has told you from the outside in, bro, we're so proud of you, dog. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you're, exactly. I was telling them on the way here, I was like, man, this guy was a one of the beginnings of TikTok one of the heavy hitters of YouTube and still is, and one of the guys that's balancing his whole life and still doing this at the same and time. It's all about balance, man. If you can balance everything now, everything will work out eventually. Exactly. Somehow, some way. If there's a will, there's a way. I love that. I love, I that. love that. It's a live podcast. Very most authentic, most organic. There we go. Wow. Um,